Hey people, it's your boy BQ in the place to be, King of the Mountain Radio, YouTube channel. Do me a favor, please hit the subscribe button here on the channel if it's your first time swinging through, if you are a Global Force Wrestling fan. Why? Because this is the number one channel, upcoming channel at that. For Global Force Wrestling fans and positive discussion. Not only do I upload the King of the Mountain podcast each week that covers Impact in a positive light, an honest but positive light, I also have got a vlog called BQ Speaks where I talk on various topics. I break GFW news as it comes out, so it's one of the first places on YouTube that you can hear it. Uh, excuse me? I just started a segment called GFW Live Reports, where I mean, I'm going to be doing this all year. Every time they hit the road, I'm going to sit down with someone who was really there. So you can really hear about the atmosphere, the crowd, the matches. It, it's a straight dirt sheet killer. Are you calling me a liar? Everything you want to know about the actual live event, you can hear on the channel. I got lots of different content that I'm GFW discussion questions and everything. So we have a good time on this YouTube channel. A lot of people are really, really enjoying it. And we've seen a lot of growth in the last couple of weeks. So definitely subscribe here. This is the debut of my interview segment called Talking Armageddon. I've done plenty of interviews in the past, but it's just been kind of part of the King of the Mountain podcast. This time it's its own segment, Talking Armageddon. And I sat down with GFW Knockouts champion, Sienna. This was a great interview. This was better than I possibly could have imagined it would be. And when I interview someone, I do not like to ask the questions like, who were your favorite wrestlers growing up? And tell me about where you started training. You could hear that on any single podcast out there that you listen to. I try to have a little bit more fun and ask just ask stuff that the Global Force Wrestling fans really want to know. So you want to know about how Sienna responds or what goes on in her head when people say come to WWE because as fans I know that's not our favorite thing that we like to see if you want to hear about her take on the contracts you know the dirt sheets are spreading a lot of caca about the contracts right now how they're blackballing the wrestlers and trying to take their money I mean if you want to hear what she has to say about that definitely listen to this interview listen to the entire interview got some really really good questions some good Twitter questions if you want to know how she handles the negativity or what she thinks about it, she's got a couple rants in this. I know you guys like rants, so enjoy the interview with Sienna. This was uh, this was great. I had a tremendous time, and we talk a little bit about her Patreon. I'm going to put the link to the Patreon in the description here. It is basically a fan club. Please click it and check it out, and enjoy this interview with GFW Knockout Champion Sienna. Hello, Mrs. Jarrett. Sienna. Look who is ready after all, Mrs. Jarrett. How does that make you feel inside, Mrs. Jarrett? Congratulations, Sienna. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the line right now is True Greatness. Joining me today, she possesses the single greatest streak in Slammiversary history, and she is a current reigning and defending GFW Knockouts champion, Sienna. Sienna, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Great, really great to talk to you. As I've previously pointed out on my podcast, I'm a proud monthly subscriber of your Patreon. I think I was one of the very first 10 signups. I know I was in the first handful. So Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, that pretty much makes us best friends. Would you? Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a fair statement. Speaking of best friends, uh, there's this guy that follows me on Twitter, and he's 100% convinced that he's Velvet Sky's best friend. And oh, okay. do you have any experiences with that with like slightly obsessive fans? I have been very fortunate. I haven't had anyone stalking me that I'm aware of. Um, whether they're doing it and I'm not aware of it, that's another story. But um, to my knowledge, I haven't had, any, had anything too crazy yet. You've got some pretty cool fans. I mean, being a part of your Patreon and being a part of the Facebook group and the blog, I mean, there's some pretty cool people in there. Yeah, definitely. I love, that's really why I wanted to start the Patreon in the first place. Um, I, anyone who follows me on social media knows that I'm a fairly private person. Um, and a Patreon is a way for me to connect with my fans because, you know, I mean, yeah, social media is a great way to connect with fans too, but you don't just connect with fans on social media. You connect with everyone. Um, and a lot of the, I, I hate everyone in general, so I'd much rather just, I'm not going to open up to people or share um, parts of my life with people who don't care 
or want to be there. So Patreon is a way for me to kind of like weed those people out and just um, the people that I am going to share things with, because really no one deserves to be a part of your life. You know, you don't owe anyone that. So um, the people that I feel that deserve that are the people who I kind of weed out through the Patreon. Like they're not going to be there if they don't want to be there. What is the uh, Patreon address? I, I like to give it on my podcast, but I can't always spell Allison. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> um, I believe it is just Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Allison K A L L Y S I N K A Y. And I really recommend people do it. I absolutely love it. I'm part of a couple Patreons, but yours is the only one that I put any money into like the other ones I, I might do like a, a dollar a month just to support somebody but yours yeah. is really great because you you really get involved and some of the other ones I'm a part of are not not really worth the other tiers thank you I appreciate that because this is my first run at it I've been doing it for I think since April I think around then was around when I started it um, I had built out that page for about a month before I actually launched it because I wasn't sure I, I searched for any other wrestlers and there were none there are a lot of podcasts and there are a lot of like uh, cosplay girls on there, but um, I could not find and nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying like I couldn't find any uh, wrestlers. So I, th I think I'm the first one. Um, I don't know if anyone else has jumped on that bandwagon yet, but uh, I'm having fun with it. It's like a way for me to make a subscription service to merchandise and also to exclusive content. Um, and Patreon's basically the middleman, but I'm, I'm having fun so far and and all the patrons uh, so far seem to be enjoying it as well. The blog is great. That's what that's what is so worth it for me. Like I enjoy the Facebook group. I think I was the first person to get an argument on that group, so I apologize. Probably. But it's okay. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoy the blog. That is, it, it's so uncut and just you. It's not, it's not fluff at all. Thank you. I try. <laughs> speaking speaking of uh, Velvet Skies, I was typing out this question. You uh, didn't you retire her in like your second or third week with the company? I did. I think it was my second or third match yeah yeah i do hold that uh i hold that record so i know you've been uh obviously working the indie scene for several years and but this past weekend you had the impact live impact hit the road for the first time in a year and a half can you tell me a little bit about being part of the live event return and what the experience was like traveling outside of orlando with this group of people I was so pumped for this because I, just like you said, I come from the Indies. So for me, it's kind of like going back to my roots a little bit and we're not going down to a um, soundstage and we're going back to, uh, we're kind of going to our fans instead of bringing them to us. And that has such a different atmosphere because these are fans that are watching us on TV every week, but they don't get to see us on a regular basis like the fans in Orlando. So they act a different way too. Like they're much more live because they're not, uh, I guess desensitize a little bit to seeing us like they're not spoiled in that sense where they're like they're there waiting for us as opposed to like oh yeah you know impacts running again um the fans in the impact zone they're great and all but uh it is different when you are at a taping for like a week at a time you know and you know that we're coming back the next month or in a couple months versus fans who don't know when the next time they're gonna be able to see us live is so the atmosphere is absolutely different I love traveling. I love visiting new places. I'm a tourist. I can admit that. And uh, so, yeah, I was pumped for this. It, and it didn't disappoint. Those fans were awesome. I'm really happy to hear that. I know a lot of people who are at the shows, and I've heard um, I've, I've heard lots of really good things about it. I know the um, Internet likes to put their own spin on the events and everything, the people who weren't there. But the people who were there said some really good things. And you touched on the Impact Zone. I've been in the Impact Zone about five or six times but for me it's a drive like i used to live in florida it was a seven hour drive for me but i would still i would still go uh when i was when i had the opportunity now i don't live in florida but i know for me every time i went there i didn't know when i was going to go back again so i always had a lot of energy i have my yeah. kids with me we had a lot of energy but i can understand if you're there for a block i mean it's like you said you, you kind of get spoiled it's the same thing on the indies, really. Like, they're, overall, you, there are definitely people there that are really hype and they're really excited for everything that's going on. But you'll just, like, occasionally, you'll see a picture or maybe, like, a video back of the show and not just impact in, in uh, specifically, but also just indies. I've seen this where you see that fan who's gone to, like, every single show and they're just sitting there with a blank expression on their face. You know, something crazy is happening and they're not even, like, blinking because they just... <laughs> You know what I mean? They've seen it all. They, they they go to the shows all the time, and I don't know. I always want to ask them like, "What is in it for you anymore?" I don't know. I don't mean to sound shitty, but like, 
it just it, it's just interesting to me when you see those people who don't react they're just sitting on their hands i've lived in three different states in my in my life because i'm a i just got off active duty in the military a few years ago and um I used to live in California and I was stationed there as well. And then I got stationed in Florida. Now I live in Illinois, but I noticed just living in California and living in Florida. And I don't want to talk bad about people who live there because they're my people too, but they're almost, they're almost a little spoiled and entitled because you, you have the nice weather, you have the beach, you have in California, we had so many sports teams, we couldn't even keep up with them. And I just noticed here living in my little slice of paradise in southern illinois we have like the cardinals couple sports teams but here people seem to enjoy wrestling and appreciate it a lot more and i don't know i think some sometimes parts of the country like florida california they just they don't know what it's like to live somewhere else and not have the niceties i guess yeah not even just the city but they florida is it does have a lot of wrestling so uh that could also be a part of it and i don't know just to kind of uh explain i guess on the opposite end of the spectrum just to give an example um one of the last shimmer tapings i think it was shimmer 79 i could be wrong but it was around there um i don't know if you or anyone has ever heard about this match saw this match um on twitter but i posted a video a little gif or uh, and a video on instagram of a clip of it it was a four-way match and it was me versus mia yim versus shazza mckenzie versus veda scott and uh that match was <laughs> One of the craziest crowds that we ever that I ever wrestled in front of, and I don't really know why. Like it was, you know, uh, we have four tapings in two days at Shimmer, so that's another place where you see some fans that are very desensitized to everything that they're seeing, um, <laughs> understandably so by the end. Um, and for some reason, when we were doing introductions, all of the fans went crazy. Like every single person in that venue was on their feet screaming. Every time they were supposed to cheer. They're all at like 100 and same thing with booing. And it started with the introductions. I really could give credit to the ref because he, it seemed to start with him. They booed him. They hated him. (laughs) And then from there on, every single one of our introductions was at complete full volume. And to a point where when we went to the back, I was like, were they being sarcastic? Like (laughs) they were being so loud for every single thing. It was like, almost like I liken it to when you wrestle in front of the boys. Mm -hmm. where they're participating because they know what they're supposed to do and they're but it was just it was crazy and but the result was every single person involved had such a great time we were having a blast because everyone was losing their damn minds the fans were obviously having fun they were all into it the entire time until the end and I, i just don't understand why people aren't like that more often like it makes it more fun for everyone involved it does it's very contagious if you show some energy the person next to you feels uh, compelled to do the same thing that's really contagious what's the, what's the difference between working with shine and, and shimmer i'm more of a shine guy like i watch both but shine is like more the one i make sure i always watch well shine is monthly or bi-monthly it's on iPay-per-view, so it's readily available right away um, as opposed to summer they put out dvds uh they tape twice a year it's it's two weekends a year so it's like eight tapings a year um and also, Shine, I would say, is more storyline driven, whereas Shimmer um, isn't. They have some storylines going, especially for like the championships and main event, things like that, But um, or individual characters, I guess. But uh, I would say most of the time, matches are sometimes kind of randomized, um, not in a bad way. But I would say Shine is more storyline driven than Shimmer. I'm, I'm admittingly a little bit behind on Shine. I need to watch the uh, last couple, but I know you're involved with some storylines, so I'm really uh, interested to check them out. Rewinding time a little bit further, I know it wasn't, or at least didn't feel too long ago that you heard, had your first MMA fight, which of course was a victory. And not too long after that, you signed with, which was then TNA. Can you take me through that time in your career? Like when you were signing with the company, was there a long courtship process or was it something that happened fairly quickly? It seemed to happen fairly quickly. Um, I I don't recall exactly how long I was in contact before I went to do my first pay-per-view, which was the Knockouts Knockdown 2016. Um, I would say maybe a month. Yeah, so it, it really wasn't very long um, because I knew I was not in contact with them until the until 2016. Um, so I went down there for the Knockouts pay-per-view, and they ended up bringing me back for the next set of tapings after. Uh, and I filmed 
oh, I forget how many days it was, maybe like four days of tapings. I filmed something. That was my debut, basically, is I filmed my debut through um, the next set of tapings, and I signed a contract on the last day. So it really was not, I would not say a long courtship process. It was maybe like a month or two of talking that I got brought down, and then the next set of tapings I was signed. So when you look back at that Knockouts Knockdown 2016, and I was watching some clips of this the other day, when you compare that person to the Sienna we see today, um, I, I want to hear what the growth process has been like for you. Because if you look at that person then and you look at the person now, you look different, you walk different, you talk different. Um, can you talk oh, a little bit about how you've <laughs> grown and matured in the last year and a half? Yeah, I think, didn't I post a picture to the Facebook group about like, it was my first Sienna look versus now. Did I do that a while ago? Yeah, yeah I think so. And that like blew my mind because I can't believe I was ever that I was ever like the old Sienna because I feel like who I am now is very close to who I really am and who I how I have been on the indies for a long time. Um, it was just I, I feel like it was more, um, I guess, uh, I don't even know how to put it, but it was more like I wasn't sure if I should fully like go 100 percent me or if I should try to be who I thought they wanted me to be. That's probably the best way for me to describe it. And that's my mistake because I feel that I probably could have come in and just been myself. And I think I was on the pay-per-view, but then I felt like with some of the direction, I felt like I, I needed to be more of the role that they wanted me to play being Maria's enforcer. So I, I do feel that I let some of myself slip to the side and I shouldn't have done that. Um, but, and everyone tells you not to, and you always think in your head, like, no, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to stay true and blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, you have to follow direction. If they're telling you to do something, you have to try to do that. Um, so really what it was is I was new to a company. I was given a role. So I tried to do that the best I could while still, of course, I want to make myself stand out. So I, there was still a little bit of my personality in there, but slowly, but surely what I believe happened is they started to see what I was capable of. They started to trust me. They started to loosen the reins a little bit. And I was given more and more freedom until eventually I am just me. I can speak for, I'm pretty sure I can speak for anyone. We didn't see it coming when there was the episode of Impact where you had the backstage with Mackenzie Mitchell. And that's after Maria had departed the company. And that's when you started with the whole McKenna thing. And, mm -hmm. you know. She's, Good old McKenna. <laughs> are you calling me a liar? Like that whole, <laughs> that whole promo that was something that I can tell you as a fan, like we were all talking about the next day. We we're just like, where did that come from? That's awesome. <laughs> have you always been able to talk like that or is it, is it a acquired skill? Uh, I would have to ask. Usually when people ask me things like that, I always ask them, like I would say you have to ask my people who have followed me for that long. Cause I feel like me saying, yes, I've always been able to talk. sounds like really egotistical. Um, but I've always enjoyed promos and I've always, if anyone who's followed my shine work for a long time, I know has told me that, um, that they enjoy my promos the most. And, uh, it's something I take pride in. It's something that my trainer focused on when we were in training. And, um, like that was something that I don't, I don't see a lot whenever I do like jump in on someone else's training class or, um, if I talk to them about where they train, like it doesn't seem like a thing everyone focuses on. I'm sure there are trainers out there that do, which they should. Um, but that was a huge part of our class was we had to get in the ring in front of everyone and cut promos and we had to do them on the fly and we were given random characters and things like that to where um, that was a huge focus was like you have to have a character, you have to have presence, you have to be able to you know speak or you're not going to make it. Um, so that's something that I've always enjoyed and it's something that I've been waiting to do on television for a long time and I was finally given the opportunity and I guess I did well because they're they are sure giving me a lot more promos now. Oh yeah, we freaking love it. We really do as fans. We absolutely love it. Um, recently, the, the Knockouts locker room has been going undergoing some changes. There's been some rumored departures and some new signings rumored to be coming on board. So in such a short time with the company, you went from the new girl backstage to you know fast forward. Now you're one of the veterans in a locker room. So, and with the impending retirement of Gail Kim. Is the role of becoming a locker room leader something you're ready to embrace or is it something that you already are? Um, I think a locker room leader isn't, it's not like a role you're given. It's not like you now have a label, you know? I think that, um, I guess it's something that kind of happens naturally for certain people. Uh, but I also think it's a collective effort. So it's not like 
our locker room needs one leader who keeps everyone in line. I think that everyone needs to do their part and everyone not, everyone needs to not be, um, a piece of crap, you know? And, <laughs> and when we, when we get new girls, like we all collectively need to make sure they know what they're supposed to do and not do and make sure they stay in line and they learn and then they can pass that on because that's what happened to me when I started, I, I've made a lot of stupid rookie mistakes, like not nothing severe, but just dumb things. Like I would just say dumb things, you know, or ask dumb questions and I would get yelled at, you know? And so like, there are people that at the time I'm, they were mean to me or I thought they were mean to me. Um, in retrospect, I really do believe that, um, it's so cheesy, but I, they, I remember one girl told me like, I'm hard on you because I see potential in you. And I do believe that now because I would see other people do way worse things than I was doing. I mean, she wouldn't say anything. I'm like, why don't you say anything to her? But it's because I, I do believe it now that she really did want to just make sure that I wasn't an idiot. And I think that's what um, the I think that's what everyone in the business needs to do is teach the younger generation to not be an idiot. That's kind of how I was going to follow up. If I was I was going to ask if it's more of a team effort or if it's individual. So you kind of already answered that. And you haven't been quiet about stating that you want to see the knockouts division be the knockouts of old and once again be become the pinnacle for women's wrestling what in your opinion needs to happen for that to become a reality because there's one thing to want it to happen but what what needs to happen i think that everyone needs to play their part so it kind of goes back to um even just the locker room question um everyone needs to represent themselves the way that they should be um and i don't really even know how to get into detail on that um but yeah, everyone, everyone needs to basically just do their part, uh, give 100% all the time. Um, I think that, I think that we in GFW have a great opportunity to further storylines and character development and things like that through social media where other companies, they're not allowed to tweet a lot. They're or at least not like, you know, they're not allowed to like really be themselves all the time. Um, they have a lot of restrictions and we don't. And I really think that taking advantage of that um, makes a difference, especially in this day and age. It does. And it's fun to follow you, Rosemary, some of the other knockouts who, who remain uh, true to themselves from what you see on TV. And you see that on Twitter as well. And I agree with you. It really helps to, uh, to further things. Uh, recently, Pat, Pat Kenny has moved on from the company. And I know in the Facebook group you had mentioned that he was a big part of every match you had ever had while on impact um can you tell me a little bit about what it was like working with him and what that influence was in your matches i really enjoyed working with pat and i do miss him um but his lessons live on forever uh <laughs> i enjoyed working with him he has a, he's very old school and i'm very old school in the way that i think and plan matches and things like that so we clicked on a lot of levels that way and we didn't always click like we would argue sometimes like i just would not agree with certain things but um, he, we always, you know, uh, resolved it and came to a compromise or a good solution. And he, he taught a lot of the lessons to the other girls that I also firmly believe in. Um, it goes back to like social media and things like that. So I'm, I'm very happy that he was there to kind of share that knowledge and kind of keep us all in check. Are you, I don't know if you're at liberty to say this or not, but who is, are you at liberty to say who's kind of stepped into that role now that that he's moved on? Um, I'm not sure. So probably best not to, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that, I know that Karen addressed in the teleconference when it comes to the creative with the women, it's everyone, everyone right. in the meetings is they all play a part. Um, I know that Dutch, I can I mean, I'm sure I can say, cause Karen said on the teleconference, um, Dutch is very involved again, which he was in the first place when, you know, when TNA first started. Right. Right. So I want to thank you because you, saved me eighteen hundred dollars and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you why here wait what <laughs> <laughs> so i was strongly considering going to michael elgin has a, a local wrestling school here i was very strongly considering going i had some reservations because my body has a lot of mileage on it from the military as far as like my knees and my feet but it was something i wanted to do for fun not something i, I wanted to pursue necessarily but you said mm -hmm. something in your fight network video about training to wrestle and needing to have that desire to go all in um, if you're, so if you're familiar with the statement I'm referring to, can you touch on what you said for listeners who might inspire to train to wrestle? Sure. Uh, first, I want to apologize to Michael Elgin that I just <laughs> cost you money. Um, but I did mention in I don't remember word for word, but I've I've 
I'm sure it'll be a compilation of that plus other interviews I've done over time. Um, but I know that I mentioned it's not something that you can just kind of jump in and, and do for fun and do that for a long time. You have to have the passion for it because all professional wrestlers, and I think I was likening it to MMA fighters in that interview, um, we're all a little crazy. Like you have to be a little off your hinges to want to repeatedly get punched in the face or um, fall on your back or worse, you know? Um, so it's not something, I think a lot of people, especially when you see celebrities that like do appearances and stuff on TV, um, it seems like it's fun. Like, it's like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go do this fun, funny thing. I'm going to make an appearance, but it's not like you're appearing on a talk show. I mean, maybe for some people it is cause they don't get physical, but to actually like take a bump and, and put your body through that hell, it's not, it's not something you can do if you do not have a passion for it. Um, or in other words, if you're not a little bit crazy, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even imagine taking the bumps personally. I'm, I'm someone I consider myself to be in pretty good shape and everything, but I slept on my neck wrong a couple nights ago and I've been walking around. I look like Rosemary's ring entrance walking around the house right now. Like, oh my gosh. I, it is so stiff and in pain. And actually I was thinking of that when I'm, when I was coming up with this question, I was just like, gosh, my body, my body responds very slow to that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What about yours? Do you, when you take these bumps, are you feeling okay like a day later, two days later, or is it just like really very? It depends on what it is. Um, you definitely need to take care of yourself, not just in the ring, but afterwards. So just like people who work out, you have to go to the gym and there are steps that you should be taking to prevent injury and to um, keep your flexibility, things like that. So when you think of working out, you know, you think of stretching. Um, that's very much a part of wrestling as well. Um, you should be stretching and I foam roll a lot. I take Epsom salt baths a lot. Um, I started, I tried that cryotherapy. I think that's what it's called. I could be saying that completely wrong. Um, but you know, those like, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? No, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a cylinder you walk into and then it blasts you with like this cold air. It's like negative, whatever degrees. And it's, you see a lot of, I see a lot of MMA fighters do it and they post pictures on uh, Instagram. And I think that's how I even like found out about what it was. I think it was like Chris Cyborg's Instagram years ago. Um, and I went and tried it because we have one in Detroit now and I only did one and I still have like four more sessions that I paid for, but I haven't gone. <laughs> um, but I think, I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that recently got debunked that it's like, oh, it actually doesn't really help you. Um, so I don't know. You'll have to Google it yourself, but it takes like a minute or one to three minutes. Um, it feels good. I don't know. It's supposed to be good for recovery, but my whole point in saying that is that there are a lot of steps you need to take to recover from matches, just like you would just working out. Um, and obviously taking precautions in the ring to not be injured is going to be key. Um, I still have a knot on my forearm from, uh, the last knockout standing match when I went for the silencer and, and took a chair to the face slash arm. Oh, wow. So, and you still have that. And that was, yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. I still have that. I can still feel the lump. You've said that with your, your move set. You never really desire to factor MMA into what you were doing. I think you had mentioned that it's it's come up several times. Hey, do you want to kind of become an MMA, MMA fighter, but as a wrestler type of thing? And you, you seem like you've been pretty true to standard wrestling holds or whatever your moveset is. But, you know, recently, I don't know if I don't want to say you debuted it because maybe you've used it elsewhere. But like when you won at Slammiversary, I don't know if you would call it a rolling guillotine choke or whatever. But yeah. So are you deciding now maybe it's something you want to add to your repertoire a little bit? Um, not necessarily. And it, it was a debut. That was a debut of a move. Um, but my thing is I, because some people ask me, and I see it a lot on Twitter too, like you should do more MMA holds. You should do more <laughs> MMA moves. I'm like MMA moves, what does that even mean? Um, We're all experts they, on Twitter. So. I know, right? So my thing is I've been wrestling a lot longer than I've been training. I've been training for a long time. But I've been wrestling longer, and I had a character longer. So I feel that it would be very poser-ish for me to go, uh, okay, I had a fight now, so now I'm going to come to the ring with uh, MMA gloves and mouth guard and do all these MMA moves. I feel that um, certain elements have its place, and I think that certain things work better for other characters. But I feel like... I feel like having the pe the people the fact that people know my background in MMA I feel as an element to my character. I don't think I need to come out um, with 
you know, uh, a different look or a completely different move set to prove that I do that I train, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I, for me, it's mostly because that wasn't my character before. So sure. Certain elements are going to come out and, and in submissions or in footwork or in even just how I brawl, how I move, how I stand before a match is a lot different than other girls. If you watch, um, and that's just what comes naturally to me. Cause now it's what's in my muscle memory. Right. And, uh, but as far as like having an MMA gimmick, quote unquote, which seems to be what a lot of fans ask about, I feel that that is better reserved for um, people who have consistently fought um, people like Bobby Lashley or uh, Shayna Baszler, people like that. Right. Do you, uh, do you watch Friends at all? I don't. Oh, my God. I've seen it enough. My mom used to watch it when it was actually on uh, all the time. And I so I, I get the gist. I know the characters. This, I was just watching an episode this morning. Um, it, it was an episode where Monica's boyfriend decided he wanted to be the ultimate fighting champion. And he like started training and he would go out there and be really serious. And then it became a comedy within five seconds because he got his ass kicked every single oh. time. But I was just uh, curious if you were familiar with the episode or not. But I want to ask one more thing before I kind of get into these Twitter questions. And it's kind of stepping away from wrestling. So when you're not wrestling, when you're not traveling, when you're not training... What does Sienna do to unwind and step away from that world? Man, that's all I have. That's all I have in life. <laughs> Wrestling, training, uh, traveling. Um, honestly, like when I'm home, uh, I like to train. I know that sounds like really boring, but that's, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can go to the gym twice today. Like I can lift in the morning and then I can go to MMA later tonight. This is great. So <laughs> I know that sounds super boring, but that's, that's how my mind works. Um, I, what else do I like to do? I like to watch, I do watch Netflix sometimes. I did watch, I finished watching Glow last night. Um, I liked it. I approve. Um, I hope for the second season because I was invested by the end in the story. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like really, really bad horror movies. Do you really? So, so, yeah. Like which ones? Like Scream? Or no, are you talking like, like super um, cheesy? Like I mean, like B movies, like um, Bloodliner, which I'm sure you've never heard of, but no. um, it's a great. And by great, I mean it's so bad that it's good. Uh, B movie, and like at one point, this guy shoves this girl's head into a deep fryer, and it comes out as a hush puppy, like that. <laughs> time. So, um, yeah, there's uh, one of the guys uh, backstage at at Impact. He always tweets me like really bad movies he finds because he's a huge b movie buff as well um so i'm always looking for new ones if you ever if you ever come across any <laughs> i'm a i'm a b movie uh comedy guy i like i like okay. the comedy b movies and if you've you mentioned netflix if anyone has netflix you've got plenty of b movies maybe even c movies to choose from oh yeah Some definitely <laughs> i have a subscription to shutter which is through amazon prime and it's like five dollars a month, and it's all horror movies. So it's not just bad ones. There, there are more high, you know, with the actual budgets, things like that. Uh, but they have a lot of a lot of cheesy ones on there too. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bitch. I I, I don't do horror or <laughs> scary very well. I don't like. Um, I don't necessarily like gory movies. Like I don't think they need to. Some of it, it's like okay, you're just being as disgusting as you can for no reason. Like <laughs> you know what I mean. I I do like um some story too, and I do like. Sometimes I feel like horror is the wrong genre. Like I like more um, suspense or thrillers, things like that. Um, but I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the jump scares. But I'm also not a fan of like. Some people just want to see gore, and I'm like, uh, I have questions about your psyche, but. Um, not that I don't, uh, enjoy my fair share as well, but to a certain extent, like some people tell me about the movies they watch and I'm like, okay, you have, there's enough, something else going on in there. There's someone else in the company that's a, a scary movie buff. I don't remember who it might've been Braxton Sutter. I, I remember seeing something on Twitter. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I know. I'm I know not this. sure if it was him. Yeah. I know this someone, someone was talking about it not too long ago, but I want to get into a few Twitter questions here. I thought I got a whole bunch of them. Um, I try to get rid of the ones that kind of didn't make sense to me or were very uh very common yeah um and a couple of these are still kind of common but i thought we had some good ones here so uh rusty rages asks, what do you see yourself doing when once your wrestling career is over that is a really good question this is something that i think about a lot uh i really can't 
see myself not being involved in wrestling in some aspect. And I don't really know what that means, but, um, I do think that I would take on, even if I'm not wrestling anymore, that I would take on some type of role somewhere doing something involved in wrestling, even if it was, I don't know if it was out of school or if it was still with impact doing a different role. I don't know. Um, I don't plan on that happening anytime soon, but, um, I do think about that a lot and I do think I would still be involved in wrestling. All right. Save me underscore RSK 17 says, would you be open to the return of the knockouts tag belts? Yes, I, I would. I think that, uh, Laurel and I would give everyone a run for their money and the more gold, the better. Do you think that this current Laurel would be a, a suitable partner for you or are you hoping she has a little more focus? Uh, well, I do need her to focus, but at the same time, she is a nut job, so she'll do whatever, you know, she'll do whatever has to be done. She doesn't, she doesn't seem that she has any type of fear whatsoever. Um, I'm sure that has to do with the fact that she doesn't really know what's going on at, at any given moment, but, um, I definitely think that I can use that to my advantage. I feel bad for her, by the way, Slammiversary weekend, she did a podcast interview and she's a tremendous interview. She's, she's great. But the, the questions and the interviews were so terrible. Like she saved the interview, but I actually felt kind of bad for her because it was just super amateurish. Oh yeah. She gets, she gets the worst questions. <laughs> um, same person. He had, had another question. Um, how does it feel to see so many people, you, you kind of actually touched on this in Facebook the other day, but how does it feel to see so many fans fighting for GFW online or kind of standing up uh, oh, it's awesome. for neg- negativity? It's, I love that. I love when fan. I, I don't want to encourage like people fighting or whatever online because that's super childish. But at the same time, I love when fans are the ones to stand up because when if we stand up, it looks like we're being petty, right? If we're the one to address things, it's like, oh, they, but it, when fans do it, it's like, okay, it, it makes it a little different when it's not just us defending ourselves. Um, and for me, really, look, if someone says they don't like something, if they're just, if they don't like the company or they don't like me or whatever it may be, I don't care. That's fine. You have a right to your opinion and I don't care. What pisses me off is when people spread lies, when fans think that they know what they're talking about and they don't. And I have a whole separate rant on that, but I'll let you ask questions first because one of them might have to do with it. So I'll wait. That actually kind of reminds me, I was listening to your entrance theme the other day when I was putting this little video together uh, to promote the interview. My eight-year-old walks in and he's he's really good with he'll just hear a couple notes and who know whose music it is and he walks in and he's like I like Sienna's music I was like I like Sienna too he goes no I don't like Sienna I just like her music <laughs> I'll forgive him <laughs> he's still that age though you know like he knows good guys and bad guys yeah so to speak so um, that that's really where he was going with it but <laughs> my daughter watched uh, Impact for the she, I only have her in the summer and she watched Impact for the second time. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and she really liked you and Rosemary. So I got a couple of t-shirts to buy her. Amazing. I'm glad the next generation. Yeah, exactly. And she absolutely wants to do it. So she's a, uh, so it was really cool. Um, Graham Williams asked, how does the current creative team and process work differently compared to the previous regime? So, and how much freedom do you get to play? So, I guess basically summarizing, is there any difference creatively that goes on then and now? And, you know, do you have more free reign to state your opinion? Keep in mind, I was only in TNA slash Impact for a year before it changed. So I don't have too much experience with how it was before. But uh, to me, I really don't see a huge difference. And I mean that in a positive way, meaning, um, you know, we're told what we're doing. We are given like the... um, like I know what match I'm going into. I know if I have a, whatever segment, but I do have a lot of freedom. I did before as well, but I'm, I am given a lot more now. Um, but as far as the actual segments that like you're given, you have freedom. It's not, we're not 100% like scripted. And, and that's what I love. I love that I get the gist of what I'm supposed to be doing and I go out there and I do my own thing. Like I make it my own. So I would say, yes, I have a lot of freedom, but I think it's because of the trust that I've built. That segues into something I want to ask. As a matter of fact, what's your favorite part working for the company? My favorite part of working for the company overall? Yeah. Like on the show or like, just in general, like, is there something like you really enjoy the schedule or you like the creative freedom or... 
man, like all the above. I do. I love that. I don't have to look at a piece of paper and read it word for word because I think for anyone, no matter how good of a writer you have, that's just like, if, if you can't improvise and you can't put your own spin on it, that's horrible. I feel like that's a death sentence. And I see things on TV where I know people are reading word for word and it's bad. And I love that I can make that we can collectively make things make sense. And we, I, I personally don't feel that we insult the fans intelligence. And that's something that I'm very strong on because I feel that for me as a fan, that's what, when I start becoming disengaged, it's like, okay, like if you, I don't know, I, this is a whole, anything that I'm talking about can be a whole separate like rant, but, um, I won't get too deep into that, but, um, uh, yes, the creative freedom. I do really enjoy the schedule. Um, I love being down there for like almost, I would say it's usually like four to four to seven days, I'll say, um, at a time. And I enjoy being down there for like a week at a time. Um, and then I enjoy coming back up to Michigan and being secluded and away from wrestling for like a month at a time, you know, that I enjoy that. It, it helps me balance everything. World of Peligro asked, you said in the uh, Fight Network interview that you studied psychology in college. He wants to know, have you ever transferred, do you transfer any of that knowledge to your character work? Probably. Um, I don't, psychology was one of my favorite classes when I was in college. Uh, I don't know that I directly do it, but I do also discuss psychology a lot with people who are um, knowledgeable about the subject. So I'm sure that I do subconsciously, but it, it I, maybe that is really what I mean when I kind of reference um, not insulting the fans' intelligence. Um, I don't, for me, um, the psychology that I learned in, in college is a little different than uh, wrestling psychology per se, but at the same time, I, I could absolutely see where that would come into play. Maybe I don't even realize it. Um, when it comes to what makes people react, what makes them feel happy or sad or angry, you know what I mean? Things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Wrestling fan 87 wants to know, what do you have against Grado? Thinks him and LVN would make a lovely couple. <laughs> Uh, LVN is not in her right mind right now. She is not emotionally available, um, as I think you can tell by looking at her. So I feel that it is not the right time in her life to be trying to get married again or even date again. Um, she hasn't even changed her clothes yet. I think that should kind of explain and uh, <laughs> confirm that she is not ready to move on. There was a picture posted online yesterday. It was a professional photo of her and Sting at a at an event and because it was a professional photo you could really look at that dress like that thing is disgusting it has everything on it it it's been torn it has uh rosemary's mist on it it has i don't even want to know what it's picked up from the ring and and her feet are always disgusting it's a whole thing last time i was in the impact zone was the very first time she wrestled with the dress on it was for explosion and uh you know i don't spoil things when i go home uh, I, I, I was like so excited when I saw that she came out and that I was like, that is freaking great. So <laughs> I, I really enjoyed her, her work and everything. So I know the answer to this next question already, cause you've talked about it in the blog or on Facebook, but, uh, Matt cook and auto bus Maximus one, it's kind of a cool name. Um, they both ask if you could bring in a woman from the indie scene to be a part of the knockouts, who would it be women or women or women? I have a lot of answers for that, but I, my top answers that I always go to one would be Jessica Havoc because she was already in impact. Um, and we just missed each other. So she left, I came in plus, um, anyone who knows us or has, have followed the indie scene for a while now know that we're really good friends. Um, so whether she would be on my side or against me, I'm not quite sure, but it would be highly entertaining either way. Um, and secondly, I would say Madison Eagles because she is, a phenomenal wrestler and entertainer. And, um, I have yet to have a singles match with her. Uh, they have been scheduled, but none of them have actually taken place for one reason or another. Um, and I just think that she needs to be on TV somewhere. She's amazing. Didn't you have a four way match with her at shine where it was, um, the knockouts champion, the shimmer shine champion. And yeah, it was a three way. It was me, oh, her three, and three, Taylor made that was supposed to be the singles. And then, um, I, and then I think Jade was going to be defending the knockout championship, I think against Santana or someone. 
And then I won the championship. Right. So we had to change it because I think I was wrestling Madison for the Shimmer Championship. So everything had to get rearranged. I remember that. Um, every, everything. I remember different images were coming out for the card and it was just bouncing all over the place. Yeah, because, you know, things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good things happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can't even read this uh, Twitter handle, but I know he goes by TJ. What uh, what's the worst injury you've ever had in wrestling, if you've had any? Uh, the worst injury, it is I would say probably a tie between um, back in 2012, I think, when Mia Yim broke my nose, aka Jade. Um, <laughs> that sucked. There are a lot of pictures on the internet about that, or of that, I should say. Um, and then also I. When was this? This was last anniversary, or right around last anniversary. I tore my PCL. Um, didn't really say anything about it, but if you notice, back then I um, randomly started wearing a knee brace. So there was that, and and honestly, I've been—I don't want to jinx it, but I've, I have been very lucky with injuries to where they've always just been very minor, um, no surgery required. So, and I'm gonna knock on wood right now, but um, I've I've been fortunate. But either way, they suck because it does alter what I'm what I'm able to do. You know, if any type of little minor tear or anything, um, it does affect anyone in the ring. I Ben, like I said earlier, I, I still can't move my neck, so I feel for the people who yeah. really get into <laughs> really have injuries. <laughs> um, Travis, I guess Ben's B E N C Z. Um, he asked. I'm paraphrasing this one because it was written kind of funny, but so I'm, I'm paraphrasing his question. Why do you think it's more beneficial for a woman to compete in the knockouts division as opposed to another company's women's division? Like, what would you tell someone, say, no, come come wrestle here instead? Um, well, one, because I'm in the knockouts division, so that's your obvious answer. Um, I mean, there are plenty of reasons. There are reasons that I could say uh, character-wise. There are reasons I could say, um, I guess, real, quote-unquote, real answers. Um I think that in our locker room right now, everyone's working toward a common goal. So obviously like we have a rivalries and whatnot, but, um, I don't even know how to put it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it without burying anyone else. So I'm probably just going to stop there. It's kind of like everyone has a common goal to put the division on the map instead of maybe trying to get themselves over because they need that, you know, they're competing against so many others for TV time. Sure. We'll or go with something that. like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think it's the same person. I didn't write down a Twitter, Twitter handle. Um, and you, and you mentioned a rant earlier, so maybe this will even tie into that, but he was asking, <laughs> what's your stance on the negativity around global force wrestling? And what's your mindset when you hear things like come to WWE, is it insulting, flattering, neither, I always think that's funny. Um, all of us get those comments. It'll just randomly, we'll post an Instagram picture and we'll get a comment, come to WWE. And I always want to, I always want to respond and go, okay, on my way. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Do you have a connection? Are you bringing me in? Is that how, like, are you the, are you booking? Um, I didn't know that I could just show up. Like I didn't know that was a thing. So I always think it's really funny when people say that, first of all, also it does get irritating because I, I don't know. I want to ask them why. Like, why do you want me to come to WWE so you can see me on TV? Because you can see me on TV and Impact. And if you don't have the channel, you can watch it online. This is 2017. Get real. And also, why would you want me? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy where I'm at. So why do you want me to go somewhere else? That's just really what I want to know. Like, why do they say that? You know? Yeah, it's I, I don't get it. Uh, I know for us as fans, it's it's very dif it's uh, difficult, and that's one. Of, I'm, I battle trolls all day on Twitter. My followers know that, and that's one of the things when I see that, um, pisses me off. I actually retweet it and pretend like they're talking to me, and I'll be like, okay, well, you know, I'm, <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you mentioned about lying too, uh, when you see lies and. Yeah. Um, also another part of that, before we move on to another question, I don't always, I don't always get angry about it because I feel, I don't think that everyone's being malicious when they say that. I think that some people are just flat out ignorant and I don't even necessarily mean that as an insult. Um, sometimes yes, but I think that some people are just really ignorant about the whole thing. So to them, uh, I just saw someone recently comment on my Instagram and I'm not mad at them. Like I, I was fine with what they said. Um, they said something about like, uh, you know, I think, I think she could be a 
huge star in WWE. Um, not saying you're not now, you know, I love your work, blah, blah, blah. So like, I don't think they're being malicious. Um, maybe that's just their preferred company. I don't know, but it's, to me, it's just funny because, and they kind of, they kind of cover their tracks with that one. But that's what I think in my head of like, but I'm a star on this program already. I'm the champion. I am the champion on this program. Like (laughs) what, you know what I mean? It's just funny to me. Whereas you have girls who have been signed to other promotions for a long time who aren't even on the program. Right. And I don't know the reasons either. I know for me, every once in a while, like for, for me personally, I don't watch WWE, but I used to. And like Jack Swagger is a guy I want in Global Force more than anything because he was my favorite wrestler there. And I just, I never felt like he got that opportunity over there. So when I say it, it's because I'm saying, I want you to come here and uh, to my favorite company and, and have an opportunity and not be, you know, under a whole stack of other guys ahead right. of you. So, I mean, I know my reasons, but on the flip side, I don't get it. Maybe people are too lazy to turn in or they want, or tune in or they want everyone in one company. That is, that's what my rant's about too. <laughs> <laughs> that is what just drives me crazy. Like wrestling fans, I firmly believe that wrestling fans, the majority of them don't like wrestling anymore and they don't care about wrestling. They don't watch wrestling. Obviously not every single person, but in, I would say in general, wrestling fans don't like wrestling. No one hates wrestling more than wrestling fans. I feel that they sit down and they watch this product, whether it was, you know, whether they fell in love with it 20 years ago when they were nine years old, or if it was yesterday, it doesn't matter. They sit down and they watch wrestling for the first time and they go, wow, I really love this product. I love this form of entertainment. I'm entertained. I'm enthralled. I I have a passion for this now. And then you actually sit there and say to yourself, I love pro wrestling so much that I would like there to be less of it available. I would like if there was only one company running a monopoly, I would enjoy if there was only two to maybe four hours of television per week and nothing else. I would enjoy if professional wrestlers uh, all were unable to make it to the top unless they make it to these particular four hours of television and nothing else. Um, I would like there to be less professional wrestlers available at my fingertips. Like that is that what I feel like that has to be subconsciously what's going on in their head. Um, when they, when they just want to like hate another company so bad, like, why do you want less wrestling available in the world? Why do you want less wrestlers being paid? That's what I don't get. Like why you can watch whatever program you want. Why does it matter to you? If you hate another program so much, don't watch it. Don't follow the Twitter. Why are you responding to our tweets? You know what I mean? (laughs) Absolutely. That's just the beginning. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to war with this top rope press right right now on Twitter. They uh, I know you liked one of my tweets the other day, but they they very conveniently posted uh, pictures of the uh, house shows before anyone got there. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that's the one that I like. That's what I, and that's exactly what I mean when I'm talking about people just blatantly lying. You posted a picture. Were they even there? Because one, either you weren't there and you're posting things you don't even know because you weren't there. Or two, you showed up and you paid for a ticket and you're trying to like what? You know what I mean? Like either way, you lose doing that. And I feel like it's, it's just so funny. Like that's that's what pisses me off when it's just a flat out lie. You posted a picture before everyone was even in their seats. And everyone knows ballpark shows. It's, it's always going to look like there are way less people there than actually are. But there were uh, so many. I was I was actually surprised at how many people we had in our VIP meet and greet because not that I think we couldn't do it, but because I was expecting like, okay, I'll be out here for 20 minutes. And I was out there for over an hour each time. And I'm like, this is awesome. If the majority of our fans that are coming and buying tickets are all buying VIP, that says something. And I think that says something positive. Absolutely. Cause I always go VIP at the impact zone and I've gone VIP for, even if I'm there for one night, like I was there for slam anniversary last year when he won the title, I, I paid VIP for one night and then I, I had to come back home. But, um, I know I've stood in line for those and usually it's, you know, 20 minutes. I'm, I'm through and I'm done and everything. So that's really great to hear. I know there was a, uh, there was someone at the very first show who bought a ticket was VIP and was there specifically to post, uh, photos online before the crowd filled in. That that's the best part to me. I'm like, wow, well you gave us money. So thanks. (laughs) I know that's that's the funny part. And I don't know, I think it's just such a, and this kind of goes back to the WWE comment too about please come to WWE. I feel like people do things like this because they just don't, it's just like a bandwagon thing to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's just fun to like hate on this or whatever. Like I I can't, I can't imagine that these people have lives at all. No. Like, like 
wrestling fans, they they want to, or I can't even call them fans. Like to me, those are the marks. And I don't use that term very often, but those are the marks. You're a mark. Um, promoters that do that kind of stuff are marks. Um, a lot of wrestlers are marks, but I do not call fans marks and those people are not fans. So I will call them that. Um, I just don't, I, I don't fully understand it. I think it's just a, a bandwagon thing to do. They're just hopping on like, oh, this is this is trendy. Why are you so involved? Why aren't you watching the show and being entertained? And it doesn't have to be ours. It can be any. You're not watching matches and being entertained. You're, you don't want to know about the wrestling. You want to know about backstage stuff. You want to know about politics and shenanigans and lawsuits and all these other things. You're not even a wrestling fan anymore. You're just a loser who needs drama in their life because you have a boring one. So you go online, you read the dirt sheets. You don't even watch the program just so you can feel like you're involved in something. I think my listeners are going to love everything you just said. <laughs> Sometimes we as fans need to hear that. We just And this this is another reason why I love where I'm at because I can say things like that and it's encouraged. They I'm not going to say anything that is going to get us in trouble. I'm not stupid and that's the difference between being savage. Being savage doesn't mean you have to just say everything on your mind and be stupid. There are a lot of things. There are a lot more things that I could say that I won't because I'm not dumb. But I I think that people do need to hear that. It's not going to make a difference to them because if they're already ignorant, ignorant enough to do these things, they're going to continue. But um, I just want them to come, like, say stuff to my face one day. I wish they would. Yeah. I, I found a – there was a guy trolling on Twitter not too long ago, and I found out he was in my same city. I was like – I am at Panda Express right now eating. Come on. <laughs> come come say all this negative stuff about the company in my face. And, of course, he didn't take me up on it. Um, kind of staying on the same I, – I got two more questions for you. So staying on the same same wavelength here and then uh, something a little more positive. There's a lot of rumors circulating online about the poorly structured contracts with the company and how the company is trying to withhold your money and keep your money and blackball you. And Rosemary said on, on Reddit – if the deals were as bad, were that bad, then none of us would sign them. That might be the one thing that Rosemary and I ever agree on. Right. But uh, <laughs> that's that is the the second thing that I recently went on a rant about, not publicly, but um, it what just going back to what I said before. What drives me crazy is when people think they know what they're talking about and they don't. I will say I can only speak for myself. I don't know what anyone else's deal is. I don't know what they were promised versus what they were given. I only know my own situation, and I can tell you with 100% confidence that I am happy. I'm happy where I'm at, and if I wasn't, I had an opportunity to leave not too long ago, and I didn't. I re-signed. I'm here to stay. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable, and there are other details of my contract that I would love to just smash every Mark's <laughs> idea of what they think they know so I could just prove them wrong but because I'm a professional I'm not going to get into details of my contract not specific details but just know that whatever you're saying or whatever you think you know about like them taking our money and things like that is not true at least not for everyone that I can say I can't speak for everyone else but for my situation that's I'm happy I'm comfortable where I am or I wouldn't be here all right it's really awesome to hear the last thing I want to ask you and I probably should have this, asked this a little bit earlier when we were talking about the live events. You got an opportunity to work with Taya, and I don't know if this is the first time that you have done so. I know I, I imagine you guys are following on Twitter. You guys are pretty good friends. Um, but is it your first time working together, uh, yes or no? And, and what was it like at the Impact Live events being able to work t two matches with her? I was excited to finally get to uh, work with her um, well, well, the first night it was one-on-one, -on -one, second night it was a uh, triple threat. Uh, we had previously met for the first time and worked together for the first time at the Lucha World Cup last year when we I was representing uh, TNA at the time. Yeah, and, I, uh, I, I ordered that. I enjoyed oh, that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So we had the, um, I think it was like a second round match, and it was, but it was a, gi a giant tag match, so I think we maybe interacted like once or twice. It was something very, very minor. Um, so now we actually had a, an opportunity to work together fully and it only goes up from here, the performance wise, the, you know what I mean? Like we, I, I love that we got to do like almost like a feeling out process on a house show. And, um, she's, I am excited to have talented women in the locker room. Um, obviously we ha we currently have talented women in the locker room, but, um, the more talent, the better. And I'm not really sure which way that's going to go, 
Um, cause one match, it seemed like she wasn't on my side. Another, it seemed like she was. So, um, that I'm not sure of, but either way, um, either whether she's with me or against me, it's going to be entertaining. And that's cause you had the alley factor the second time around. So yes. Probably. <laughs> All right. Um, that is going to do it. Or would you, uh, mind plugging your social media? Yeah. My social media is really easy now. It's just at Sienna. So Twitter and Instagram are both just at Sienna. I do have a Facebook fan page. I don't use it as much as I use Twitter and Instagram, but if you want to follow it, it's facebook.com slash Sienna, AK 47. Uh, just Sienna was taken on that one. And, um, my Patreon, check it out. Uh, I know we talked about the link earlier, um, patreon.com slash Allison K. Uh, there's a whole intro page that kind of explains what it's there for. Um, it's really just to kind of create more of a tight knit group with, with fans that actually want to be there and not annoy the hell out of me. So, um, <laughs> check that out. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely check that out, folks. Um, Sienna, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It means a lot to me and, uh, just really appreciate it. Thank you for being an awesome supporter. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And spreading the truth. Spread that gospel. Hell yeah. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here to do. Thank you again to Sienna for coming by the podcast talking armageddon here at the king of the mountain radio youtube channel so please hit that subscribe button we got ali coming on in just a few days you definitely don't want to miss that so if you enjoyed the interview with sienna please hit subscribe and just a bonus question for you guys something i asked her on twitter that i did not ask on the podcast i asked her you had a couple of interactions with eli drake on one night only that were very funny and entertaining i thought your chemistry was solid gold Was there ever any plans to bring that to the main screen on Impact? Her response was, the one night only shows are about experimenting and mixing up characters that normally would not interact on the current weekly programming. I do recall the writers telling us that there was chemistry there, but I don't think there was necessarily ever a plan to make it a thing on Impact. So just a bonus question for you guys right there. And I will be talking to you guys later. Don't forget, Ali's coming on soon. Hit that subscribe button. Peace.